The Meek Shall Inherit the Earth, a five-part series by L.S. Larkey and Atlantean Astrology. Part 2. Meekness as Weakness and Submissiveness. In traditional Christian theology, meekness is often portrayed as a virtue. It is seen as synonymous with humility, gentleness, and patient endurance in the face of adversity. Over centuries, this concept has been reinforced by religious leaders and scholars as an essential characteristic of a righteous person, a disposition of self-restraint and deference that aligns with submission to God's will. However, beneath this idealized interpretation lies another more troubling reality. The possibility that meekness, as described in Jesus' Beatitudes, refers not to a noble virtue but to a condition of weakness and submissiveness easily exploited by those in power. This section will argue that meekness, rather than being a moral or spiritual strength, represents the weak-mindedness of individuals who, through their submission, fail to seek truth, resist manipulation, or challenge systems of power. These are the people who do not question the status quo, who are subdued by societal norms and external forces. They are not the spiritually awakened, but those who allow themselves to be led without thought or agency. In this way, Meekness, as described in the Bible, may reflect a profound form of intellectual and spiritual passivity, a failure to transcend the earthly conditions that bind them. Etymology of meekness, the tamed mind. To fully understand how meekness can be interpreted as weakness and submissiveness, it is crucial to explore the etymology of the word meek and its implications. The word has roots in several languages, including Latin and Hebrew, that shed light on its deeper, more revealing meanings. In Latin, the word for meek is mansuetus, which derives from manus, hand, and suetus, accustomed. The image evoked by this word is one of taming, a creature that has been brought under control by a human hand. Originally used to describe animals that had been domesticated, mansuetus later came to describe people who were similarly subdued, those who had learned to accept their place without resistance. When applied to human beings, this notion of meekness implies submission to an external authority, a kind of mental or emotional taming in which the individual is rendered passive and compliant. In the Hebrew language, the word translated as meek is anav, anav, which means humble or afflicted. While humility can be a virtue in certain contexts, the word anav often carries connotations of being humbled by external forces. It refers to those who are afflicted, oppressed, or brought low, suggesting a lack of power or agency. This use of meekness aligns with the idea that the meek are those who have been subdued or weakened, not necessarily by choice, but by the circumstances imposed upon them. If Jesus had meant to speak about the humble inheriting the earth, he could have used a word that conveyed true humility, which is often recognized as a divine attribute. Humility, in Christian thought, is about acknowledging one's dependence on God, a conscious submission to a higher spiritual authority out of wisdom and love, rather than weakness or fear. Meekness, however, as we have redefined it, implies submission not to God, but to earthly powers. This distinction is crucial as Jesus often spoke of spiritual humility as a pathway to the kingdom of heaven, whereas meekness in this context reflects an acceptance of worldly oppression. Meekness as a state of mental submission. With this understanding of meekness in mind, we can begin to see how it operates as a form of mental submission. Meekness in this interpretation is not merely a personal choice to be humble or patient, Rather, it is a condition imposed on individuals by external powers, whether those powers are political, social, or religious. It represents a state in which individuals have been rendered passive and compliant, unable or unwilling to question the structures that govern their lives. The weak-mindedness associated with meekness can be seen in how people who are meek are often those who have been trained not to think critically or independently. They accept the rules of the land without questioning their legitimacy or morality. They follow the teachings of their religious leaders without seeking deeper spiritual truths. They do not resist authority because they have been conditioned to believe that resistance is either futile or sinful. This is the tamed mind, one that is easily controlled and manipulated because it has been taught to submit rather than to question.
The meek, therefore, are not just passive individuals. They are the perfect subjects for social control. Throughout history, rulers and religious leaders have sought to cultivate meekness in their populations as a means of maintaining order. By promoting meekness as a virtue, they have been able to convince people that submission is morally desirable, that enduring suffering without protest is a mark of spiritual strength. This has allowed those in power to keep their subjects in a state of passive compliance, ensuring that they do not rise up against oppression or seek to change their circumstances. One of the most powerful ways that meekness has been used as a tool of control is through religious teachings. In many religious traditions, including Christianity, meekness is presented as a virtue that is pleasing to God. Believers are encouraged to be humble, to accept their suffering, and to trust that they will be rewarded in the afterlife for their patience and obedience. This message is especially potent when it is directed at oppressed or marginalized groups who are told that their suffering is part of God's plan and that their reward will come not in this life but in the next. However, this interpretation of meekness as a path to divine reward contrasts sharply with Jesus' larger message. Jesus rarely, if ever, spoke about the inheritance of the earth as a significant reward. His focus was always on the kingdom of heaven, which is a spiritual state beyond the material world. The idea that the meek would inherit the earth suggests a focus on the earthly realm, which runs contrary to the radical spiritual awakening that Jesus consistently emphasized. Jesus' message was not concerned with maintaining power structures or encouraging submission to earthly systems of authority. It was about transcending them. Thus, promoting meekness as a virtue of earthly submission misunderstands the true essence of Jesus' teachings. If inheriting the earth was truly the goal, it would signify a kind of spiritual stagnation, not growth. Jesus consistently called his followers to look beyond the material world and its limitations, urging them to seek the kingdom of heaven where divine justice, love and spiritual truth reign supreme. A profound interpretation of Jesus' words, the meek shall inherit the earth, reveals an even deeper implication. Rather than inheriting the kingdom of heaven, the meek in their failure to awaken to spiritual truth will instead inherit the earth in the form of reincarnation. In this view, Jesus may have been subtly indicating that the meek, because they have not yet learned the spiritual lessons necessary for enlightenment, will return to earth in another life to continue learning these lessons. This cycle of reincarnation offers them another opportunity to break free from the mental and spiritual submission they currently embrace. The meek, by choosing submission over illumination, are bound to the material world. In failing to transcend earthly concerns and align themselves with divine truth, they miss their opportunity to enter the kingdom of heaven in this lifetime. Instead, they are reincarnated, brought back to the material world again and again until they choose to seek the truth and fully awaken. This cycle continues until they recognize the need for spiritual growth and transformation, using their free will to pursue the kingdom of heaven rather than submitting to worldly powers. The consequences of meekness are profound. By choosing submission over illumination, the meek cut themselves off from the kingdom of heaven. They inherit the earth, as Jesus said, but this inheritance is not the spiritual reward that many have interpreted it to be. Instead, it is a reflection of their attachment to the material world. The earth represents the domain of suffering, oppression and impermanence, the realm of political power, economic exploitation and religious legalism. The meek, by choosing to remain submissive to these forces, are bound to the earth and its limitations and may be reincarnated until they learn to break free from these chains. By contrast, the kingdom of heaven is a realm of spiritual liberation, a place where truth, justice and love reign supreme. It is not a place that can be inherited through passive submission, but through active spiritual awakening. Those who enter the kingdom of heaven are not the meek, but those who have broken free from the chains of submission, who have sought out the truth and embraced the spiritual transformation that Jesus offers. The meek, by remaining in their state of weakness and submissiveness, will not inherit this kingdom because they have chosen to remain in the darkness of the material world, destined to return until they awaken.
In conclusion, meekness, as described in the Bible, is not a moral virtue, but a condition of weakness and submissiveness. It represents the state of mental and spiritual passivity in which individuals allow themselves to be tamed by the forces of the world rather than seeking the higher truths of the kingdom of heaven. If Jesus had intended to speak of humility, he would have indicated a divine quality that elevates one to spiritual strength. The meek, however, choose submission over illumination, following the rules of the land without questioning the systems of power that bind them. As a result, they do not inherit the kingdom of heaven, but remain bound to the material world and its limitations, potentially reincarnated back to earth until they learn to seek spiritual truth and use their free will to enter the kingdom of heaven.